in the problem All right. there's a purpose in the problem and so my prayers that that helped you guys through last week because some of us or all of us had some problems on last week mm -hmm. uh, uh, and so and so just because of that my prayer is that we didn't allow the problem to to stop us from what God has for us and what he desires for us to do Amen. my prayer is that you had a discernment on when that problem came you said I don't like it but there's a purpose in it. Yeah. It don't feel good, but yeah. there's a purpose in it. Matter of fact, Lord, it don't even look good, but there's a purpose in it. And a lot of times we pray for miracles. And you heard me say this before. How many of you know that God only performs miracles in dire, desperate situations? He only performs miracles in dire, desperate situations. Never when people was at their comfort, or never when they was at the their bank account was fat. Never when, like when they had all the houses and cars. Never at that time. But it was always in dire, desperate needs. When when people didn't see a way, he made a way. When people couldn't see the light at the end of the tunnel, he made a way. When you was at your wit's end and you said, "I'm finna lose it." God steps right in and does a miracle. When you, like when you said, I'm finna quit and throw in the towel, God throws it right back at you and say, wipe your face, let's get going. God desires to see us move forward no matter what. In the midst of and because of. In the midst of and because of. In the midst of. So if you have your Bibles, let me give me your, my subject first. Let me give you my subject first. So we're in, the, we're in the series moving forward. So on today, I want to talk to you from the subject of no turning back. Y'all right. no help me out for a minute. Tell your neighbor, tell your neighbor, says no turning back. No turning back. No turning back. Tell them, tell them one more time like you mean it. No turning back. Like you mean it. No turning back. No turning back. And do me one more favor. Turn to your other neighbor and prophesy to them and tell them it's no turning back. No, no turning back. No turning back. No turning back. Yeah, yeah. Some of y'all just help somebody. Because you know why? Somebody was ready to quit this morning. Somebody was ready to throw in the towel this morning. Somebody came in here ready to quit and walk out on some situation on this morning. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you just spoke to them right where they are. Yes. Amen. You come too far to quit. That's it. And you're too close to give up. Yeah. So I'm going to read a few scriptures on you to you this morning. I'm coming from the book of Exodus. Exodus is the second book of the Bible, so it's right behind Genesis. If you need some help, we know that word Exodus simply means that it's an exit. Yes, I'm right. exiting something. Exodus yes. meant I'm exiting out. Yes. Some yes. of you are exiting out of a situation on this morning. Some of you are exiting out of a problem on this morning. Some of you are exiting out of a bondage situation right. on this morning. Right. Thank you, Lord. I receive Some of you are exiting out of that place. Yes. So I want to read from two different places. If you uh, have your Bibles, you can go to Exodus chapter number 14, verses number 1 through 4. And then I'm going to skip down to Exodus 14, verses 8 through 15. So Exodus chapter number 14, verses 1 through 4. You guys know the context of this. Um, God speak to Moses after the children of Israel have been crying and hollering out for over 400 years. Matter of fact, the Bible declares that they was in bondage for the children of Egypt for 430 years. And they cried out. I don't think it took God uh, 430 years to hear them. But the Bible declares that one day it says, I've heard your cry. After all that time, and God forbid, as it does not take that long for us to 
get God's attention, but, mm -hmm. but he says, after 430 years, he says, I've heard you cry. Mm -hmm. And I'm releasing you out of that situation. I'm, I, I believe that God has heard some of you guys cry on this yeah, morning. Yeah, uh, and he right. says, I'm releasing you out of that situation. Yeah. I'm giving you an exit yeah. strategy out of that situation. Right. I'm giving you an exit out of where you were. I'm giving you an exit yeah. out of religion and to a relationship yeah. with me. So he begins to speak to Moses. He gives Moses the assignment to do something that is bigger than him. Something that Moses said, I'm not qualified for. I can't even speak. Like, I don't have the wherewithal in me to be able to do such a large assignment. I believe that we have some Moseses in this house on this morning right. or this evening that say that, Lord, this assignment is too big for me. All right, all like, right. I'm stuck where I am because I can't speak. I don't have the resources. I don't have the people. I do not have everything I need to carry out this assignment. But God looks at Moses and says, I know you don't. That's why I'll be with you. I know you don't. That's why I called you. And so, and so right where I believe, right where we are, we tell God things like that. Like, I can't do it. I, and like, this is bigger than me. That's, where, that's right where God desires to have us. Because that's a sign of humility. Matter of fact, the Bible declares that Moses was one of the most meek persons on all the earth. He was very meek. And so God can work in that. Mm -hmm. So Moses finally accepts the assignment. He goes to the church of Israel. He says in verse number one, he says, Then Moses gave these instructions, then the Lord gave these instructions to Moses. <coughs> Order the Israelites to turn back and camp by Paharoth between Migdal and the sea. He says, Camp there along the shore across Beelzefan. Then Pharaoh, I love this part right here. God will often give you instructions that don't look like the promise. God will often tell you to do things that will bewilder you. And, and like, like you can't wrap your mind around it. You know, like sometimes when he tell you to be nice to her and she'd have been mean to you. Or he'd have been mean to you and he still and God still tell you to love him anyway. Like things like that. When our flesh just want to rise up. When they did this and that to you. And it still says you got to love him anyway. Because I love you past you. I love you past your flaws. I love you past all that stuff yeah. that you did. Yeah. And so God tells us things like that. God tells us to make every effort to dwell together in the unity and the bond of peace, even though it may be a chaotic situation. He still tells you to go there and be there, even though it may be chaotic. Lord, that's confusing to me. That, like, that goes against everything that I believe. But he's trying to get you to it exit place to get now. you to yeah, your now. desired yeah. destination yeah. so he tells yeah. he tells moses like instead of going that way mm -hmm. all right. take all right. them this way mm -hmm. wow. and like I, I get it moses probably said lord like you know we go straight that way like we get there a little quicker right mm -hmm. and and but but moses probably had questions like lord you want me to go this way and that way is better and god said i'm doing something mm -hmm. all I'm, right. do, I'm, I'm doing mm -hmm. something I'm doing something. I believe uh -huh. that God is speaking that to you like he's oh, yeah. doing something. Oh, yeah. it, it feels strange. You're like, it, I, I, Lord, like, I don't have to go through this to get to that. Lord, that doesn't oh, yeah, have to yeah, happen yeah. in order for me oh, to get. My, Lord, you my. can just take me there. I don't have to experience it. I don't have to go through that. Lord, wow. you can just take me there. But the Lord said, yeah. I, like, I know that. But I'm, I'm confusing the enemy. Oh, my, like, I'm confusing. Using oh, yeah. them like they like oh, yeah, yeah that's what they yeah. see. He says, but I'm like I'm confusing them. So the Lord says to to Moses, He says, then Pharaoh would think you are confused <laughs> because wow. you because you 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 you're going back because you still love them. Because you you like you still doing all these things like like you're not getting like like you're not stooping down to their level like you're not getting caught up in all this stuff. So he says, no, like like I got you. I'm giving you clarity, but I'm confusing the enemy because they like he will think the Israelites are confused. He said they are trapped. It's like that. 
like they are trapped in the wilderness. That's what Pharaoh says. Like they're going to be trapped in the wilderness. Verse four. It says, and once again, I will harm Pharaoh's heart, and he will chase after you. I have planned this. Okay, God. God un 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 unveils his plan. He says, I planned this in order to display my glory through Pharaoh and his whole army. He says, after this, the Egyptians will know that I am the Lord. So the Israelites camped there as they were told. That's a blessing in your obedience. That's a blessing in your obedience. Sometimes God will work through you to get the glory. But watch this. As he does that, he cannot bypass you to do it. So as God gets the glory out of it, that's where Romans 8, 28 comes true. He says, all things work together for the good of those that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. He didn't say all things were good, but they would work out for your good. Right. And so sometimes we ask God to use us, but then we tell him just not in that way, Lord. <laughs> Lord, don't, don't use me like that, but use me like this. And God says, I'm going to get the glory out of it, but it's going to be good for you. All right. So let me jump down to verse number eight real quick as we go in somewhere. And, 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 and he's, he gets through all that. And the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. So he chased after the people of Israel who had left with fists raised in defiance. So it simply meant, you know how it is? Like when God tells us something like you do this and we just leave out with a zeal. They left out of Egypt like, oh, yeah, we bad. We're going to do this and we're going to do all this stuff. And then something happened. Verse 9. It says, the Egyptians chased after them with all the forces of Pharaoh's army, all his horses and chariots and charioteers and his troops. The Egyptians caught up with the people of Israel as they were camped near the, beside the shore near Pahara, across from Beelzephon. Verse 10, as Pharaoh approached, the people of Israel looked up and they panicked when they saw the Egyptians overtaking them. Now, that word overtaken, if you study it, it doesn't mean like they actually overtook them. That word overtaken in that context simply meant that something happened suddenly. Yeah. And it, it was unexpectedly. Mm -hmm. It was suddenly and it was unexpectedly. Yeah. So when they left out of that situation, they didn't expect the thing that had once held them hostage mm -hmm. to catch back up with them. Like they think when something like, know how it is? Like we think when God gives us an assignment, we like, God, I'm just going to start living for you. I'm just going to start serving you. I'm going to start doing all of these things. And we think that things are not going to come against us still. And it says that the Egyptians just came out of nowhere. You know how it is? Like we're going about our business and then things just begin to happen. You're like, God, oh, what is that? Like, where did that come from? Like, I'm doing my thing. I'm living for you. And then thing came upon them suddenly and unexpectedly. And it says, and they cried out to the Lord. Verse 11. It says, and they said to Moses, watch this. They said to Moses, why did you bring us out here to die in the wilderness? Mm -hmm. Weren't there enough graves for us in Egypt? What have you done to us? Why did you make us leave Egypt? Mm -hmm. Mm. Verse 12. Didn't we tell you this would happen while we were still in Egypt? We said, leave us alone. Let us be slaves to the Egyptians. Mm -hmm. It's better to be a slave in Egypt than a corpse in the wilderness. Verse 13. But Moses told the people, don't be afraid. Just stand there and watch the right. Lord rescue you today. The Amen. Lord wants to rescue somebody on today. Amen. The Egyptians you, will, the Egyptians you see today will never be seen again. Three more verses, verses. The Lord himself will fight for you. Thank you, Father. Just mm -hmm. stay calm. calm. Just stay calm. Mm -hmm. Then the Lord said to Moses, 
why are you crying out to me? Tell the people to get moving. Tell them to get moving. No, tell them, tell them, tell them to get moving. He says, tell the people to get moving. I'm going to give you a couple of nuggets on the day. Um, and they're going to be good. But one thing I'm aware of is this, is that I believe that we're in a time where we allow philosophy to, philosophy to solace theology. Amen. And so a lot of times we can say a lot of catchy things, but it has no substance in it. Come on with it, Pastor. Wow. Okay. So I'm going to give you a couple things on this morning that it's going to make sense. I'm going to bring it all together. I'm going to tell you a story. You guys know I like to tell stories, right? Uh, so on Friday morning, I got into a fight on Friday. Yeah, I know. I know. I know a couple couple people here got my back, so put down your guns. Put down your guns. I'm clear this up that night. I got on a fight on Friday morning, and it was, a, it was a bad fight. I woke up, and I had my mind set on doing a thing. Uh -huh. And as I began to do that thing, something else came up. And I began to do that. Mm. And then something else came up, and I began to do that. Another thing came up, wow. and I began to do that. And all of us fight this same fight every day. Mm -hmm. They say one of the most challenging things we, we wrestle with and fight with in the times that we're in is we have too many choices. Mm -hmm. Think about it. We, we have too many choices. Like, you, you can't even go to the store and get, like, like this one brand of nothing. Now, you got, like, a hundred different brands. You go down this aisle, and it's like a, like, I just want some ketchup. But it's a thousand different ketchups right now. Like, you don't know which one to get. And before you know it, like, you're sitting there for, like, ten minutes, and you just want one thing to ketchup. And so, you begin to compare. You begin to, like, compromise you begin to like like wonder okay which one should I get what should I do and before you know it like anxiety sets in all kind of stuff your mind begins to fight on which way should I go what choice should I make and it was like man and then I finally came to myself like okay let me let, let me go back to the main thing and so a lot of times all of us get into this fight in each and every day because we have too many choices and the Israelite they like they gave themselves too many choices God gave them a word, but then when life hit them, they began to wrestle with that word. They began to compromise with that word. They began to, like, listen to another option. Now, I don't have time to go to it, but if you look in Exodus chapter number 14, verse number 12, it said that, that, that God had gave them a promise in Exodus 13, and he says that, I'm going to be with you. I'm going to take you here. Matter of fact, the Bible declares that it said that, the, that a cloud through the day led them. And it says that nighttime, watch this, it said that same cloud was a pillar of fire. And they were able to always travel day or night. Sometimes we get in a situation where we allow a situation to stop us. But God says you able to go whenever, wherever, no matter what time of the day it is. And so, and so I finally come to myself, I said, I can't, I can't wrestle with all these choices. I'm just going to go back to the main thing. And so, uh, that's how we get sometimes. Mm. That's how we get. Wow. And how many of you know that each and every day, we're going to face things that try and hold you back yeah. from walking yeah. in your destiny? We're going we're gonna to be challenged with other options outside of the option or, or, or the main thing that God desires for us to do. If I had to give you an example, I would take you to Genesis, you know, in the Bible, when, in, in chapter 3, where it says that God tells uh, Adam and Eve, hey, you can eat from any tree of the garden, just don't all eat right, from that tree. Right, the yeah, enemy right. steps in and says, did God really say and the minute she entertained it, she gave herself another option. Wow. The minute you begin to entertain 
of the things outside of the main thing, you just giving yourself another option to stay stagnant. God desires for you to move forward, but the minute you give yourself an option outside of the main thing, you begin to cause yourself to be stagnant, and God does not want us to be stagnant. Right, right, right. So on today, I want to speak to your hope real quick. I want to speak to your faith real quick. I want to speak to those right now who just like feel like they are stuck and not moving forward. I want to talk to you just for a minute. You know, we can do that, right? Because the Bible declares that in Romans 4 and 17, we can speak those things that are not as though they are. So I'm declaring right now that you're going to be moving forward after today. You're going to be moving forward in spite of and because of your situation. You got to keep moving forward. You can't allow challenging situation to stop you. You got to keep moving forward. You can't allow chaos to cause you to be stagnant. You got to keep moving forward. You can't allow hard places to allow you to be stagnant. You got to keep moving forward. You can't allow situations that you don't understand to cause you to be stagnant. You got to keep moving forward. You can't allow offenses or none of those things cause you to be stagnant and keep you you got to move forward. Because right, the, uh, the fence is just what it says. It makes you, it causes you to be a, a fence. And you know what a fence does? Yeah. It keeps something out or it holds something right. in. Right. So a lot of times you allow fences to build a fence, yeah. you stop the very thing, the grace flow that God desires to have on your life from coming in. All right. But it keeps you from stepping outside and stepping in to what God has for you. So you can't allow it to keep you from moving forward. Thank you, Lord. Because here, here, here's, here's one of those nuggets. I want to get it sounds good, and it's true. The things that you are distracted by are rarely as important as the thing you, it distracts you from. I'm going to say that one again. I need you guys to get that. It went over somebody's head. The things that you are distracted by are rarely as important as the thing is distracting you from. Mm, uh -huh. Sometimes we get like, like God has something for us over there uh -huh. and something over here uh -huh. distracts right. us. Mm -hmm. right. But God, right. the blessing is over there. Yeah. Right. But we allow the thing over here distract right. us from that. Right. The thing over here is just a distraction. It's not that important. Like, it's just a distraction. But the thing over there is destiny. The thing over there is purpose. The thing over there is everything that God truly has for you. And sometimes we miss it and we say, well, God, like, that wasn't it. No, that was it. You just got distracted from the thing over here. And the main thing was over there. So the thing you get distracted by is rarely as important you is important from the thing you get distracted from. And, and you got to realize if God doesn't take his hand off you, you should take his, your eyes off him. If God doesn't take his hand off you, you should never take your eyes off him. And that's what the children of Israel did. Like God says, you are my chosen people. You are my chosen generation. So God never took his hand off them. But they took their eyes off him. God, like, because it said that it was a pillar of cloud during the day that they followed. And that was the presence of God. But they took their eyes off God and began to look at the thing that was behind him. You heard me say it before. Don't trip up over things that are behind you. Paul says this. He says, I'm pressing forward towards the mark of the higher calling which is in Christ Jesus. As long as you are pursuing Jesus, things are going to happen. As long as you are pursuing Jesus, you never have to wonder about which direction you need to go. Just pursue Jesus. That's a, that's, that's, that, that helps somebody right there because some of us are asking, am I going the right way? Am I doing the right thing? If you're pursuing Jesus, then you're going the right way. You're doing the right thing. No matter what it feels like, no matter what it looks like. Just because they said something different, don't allow that to cause you to miss out on what God is doing. Watch this. In Exodus 14, they said, they said, what? Like, didn't we tell you that it would be better 
for us to stay over there and all the chaos rather than like get like 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 get buried out here in the wilderness and, and, and from my train of thought it only took one person to say that wow. and it's discouraged the bible said like it was millions that came out of egypt and one person, one person. said didn't they tell you mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that it was better mm -hmm. for us to stay back there didn't we tell you it was better for us to stay in bondage wow. than to come over here? And somebody heard it. And somebody else began to say it. And somebody else began to say it. And somebody else to begin oh, to say it. And, and they allow one thing they heard caused them to miss out on what God is doing. Amen. Mm -hmm. I want to tell some of you, God did not bring you this for to leave you. God did not bring you this for to quit on you. God did not bring you this for to abandon you. God did not bring you this for to quit on you. God did not bring you this for to leave you where you are. If God said he's taking you to the promised land, guess what? He's taking you to the promised land. If God said you was going to have this amazing marriage, he told you you was going to be a millionaire, you know what you're going to do? You're going to be a millionaire. You're going to have all of these things. But don't allow what you hear to miss out on what God is saying. You got to remain anchored in what you know and not what you hear. You got to remain anchored in what you know and not what you hear. Because they was not anchored in what they knew, they got lost on something that they heard. When you know that you know that you know, it does not matter the situation. It does not matter how many red seas in front of you. Yeah. It does not matter who is chasing you. Yeah. It does not matter if you're surrounded by desert places. Yeah. If you know that God told you, it doesn't matter who's chasing you. It does not matter who's in front of you. Only thing you got to do is keep pushing forward on what you know and not what you hear. Because in this walk, in this journey, you're going to hear some things that doesn't look like what God has told you. And that's a distraction. you got to continue to fool in what God called you to. So don't be distracted. Don't get caught up in what you hear that caused you to miss out on who you know. you got to remain anchored in what you know and not what you hear. So some of us need to cancel out some things that we've been hearing. Some of us need to cancel out all that stuff. And say, I hear you, I was listening to you, but it's not gonna stop me from going what God uh, going to what God has for me. That's not gonna stop me from walking in purpose. That's not gonna stop me from receiving a promise. That's not gonna stop me from being everything that God called me to be. You remain anchored. Continue to move forward. Continue to move forward in what God has called you to. Continue to move forward in purpose. Continue to move forward in who God has called you to be. Yes, we're going to miss it sometime, but the only thing you got to do is repent and get on your face and have a repentant heart. And you know what God going to do? He's going to welcome you back with open arms. Just like the prodigal son came back. God is like, when you come back to God and repent of that thing, you know what God going to do? He says, Go kill the fattest lamb. Yeah. He said, we're going to have a party. The Bible declares that when one give his life to the Lord, but the angels are rejoicing. Yeah, are. Yeah. And so we're going to rejoice you. with you. Yeah. I'm going to give you a few nuggets on this morning and try to move forward when the red sea is in front of you on, and, yeah. and all that is chasing you. And then you're surrounded by a desert and all these things. You don't have nowhere to go. But I'm gonna tell you this morning on what we're gonna do. We're not gonna we're not gonna gripe about it. We're not gonna cry about it. We're not gonna say I might as well just go back to that situation because like like at least over there I knew how to manage my mess. At least over there, like I was in mess, but at least I was eating. At least I was just getting by. At least I was just surviving. But I wanna tell some of you on this morning. 
on this evening. God does not just want you to survive in this season. He wants you to thrive in this season. God wants those children of Israel to thrive and not just survive. And some of us are just surviving in this season. God is not satisfied with where you are. So when you come against those places, God still desires that you move forward. Some of y'all look for me to say something magical this on this point. I'm not gonna, I ain't got nothing magical for you. My pastor used to say this all the time. You want magic, you need to go to the uh magic kingdom. That's why the magic is. Only thing I'm gonna do is give you the word of Jesus. I'm gonna give you the word of God. That's all I can give you. And I guarantee you, if you apply that word, it will take root and it will bring about heart. It will take root and bring about. I, I, like sometimes I really want to come in here and just and just give you like this this message and make you feel so good. My prayers that that it, it, this encourages you. I'm just gonna I'm, I'm gonna point you to the feet of Jesus. That's right. That's all I can do. I can point you to the feet of Jesus. I don't have the power to change you, Amen. but I know the one who does. Amen. I don't have the power to change your situation, but I know who does. Yeah. And I'm gonna point you to His feet every Amen. time. Every single time. So when you run into a hard situation, just like the children of Israel did, I'm going to tell you this. Some of you are going to want to turn back. Some of you are going to want to go back. Some of you are going to want to say, man, I was, I was doing all right over there. God is not satisfied with you just being all right. God is not satisfied with you being average because we don't serve an average God. We serve a God who is absolutely amazing. We serve a God who is excellent. We serve a God who is all powerful, all knowing, and all seeing. And he's not satisfied with average because average doesn't change anything. Average makes you blend in. And God says you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. So you are meant to stand out. When people tell you, you, you think you are there, you, you should tell them, I am. I, I sure am. I sure am. Because I'm a child of God. If you look all throughout scripture, God himself, it, it tells you God himself, it always says that God makes a difference in his children and the world. He makes a difference, so you should stand out. You should be the boss. You should be receiving those promotions. You should have a fat bank account with millions in it. You should be driving a nice car. You should be living in a nice home. You should be wearing nice clothes. Why? Because God does want you to live that type of life. For his glory, though. For his glory. Don't miss it. For his glory. Not, not for you. Not for you. It, it, it's for his glory. It's for his glory. It's for his glory. It's for his glory. So I want to talk to a few people this morning who have came against some hard situations. And if you feel like you are trapped at the Red Sea, and you feel like situations are chasing you, and they came upon you suddenly and unexpectedly, and you're you like and you are surrounded by nothing but desert places, you don't have nowhere to go. And you say, as I like, and you want to say, and maybe some of you have said, I should have just stayed over there. Mm. At least I can manage it. At least I know how to put up with it. At least the confident growth can't stay in the same house. <laughs> so God wants to take you somewhere. He wants to do something through you. If you, I don't know why I'm like, like talking like this. <laughs> Paul, Paul said, Paul, Paul, Paul talked like that to some of the church. He said, I must be a fool to talk like this. He said, but 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 the Holy Spirit was functioning him and the Holy Spirit was working through him and, and speaking through him. God desires to do something great. So instead of saying, instead of saying we should have just, I need to go back over there. Here's number one. Here's what you need to do. Here's what Moses did. He paused and he prayed. Wow. Wow. This, that's pretty simple, ain't it? No, like, like, Pastor, it can't be that simple. I told you some of you guys was looking for something magic, but I'm in the book. I'm in the book. It says that, like, like when they got to the Red Sea and they began to cry out and say, Dude, why did you bring me from over there to right here? It's a challenge right here. 
Like at least back there, it was a challenge also, but I knew how to manage that mess. Yeah. I, I had, like I had been there for a long time and I knew how to get through it. Like I knew what it would take to get through it, the challenging time. I knew what it would take. And plus I was getting a meal every day. Like I was getting the leftovers, at least I was eating, but God is not satisfied with you getting the leftovers. God wants you to have a five course meal. God wants you to have a root Chris steaks and not an Applebee's steak. God wants you to have his best and not left over. Right, so right, so right. so he says that he says, listen, no, I don't like I don't want you because once they begin to grumble, you know what they did? They took their eyes off Canaan and they began to look back at Egypt. Instead of them crying out, God says, Listen, you know what happens when you pause and you pray? Mm -hmm. That tells God, like, God, my yeah. eyes are on oh, you. Yeah. I, like they came upon us unexpectedly and suddenly. But God, you are the God who is able to make all things new. Man. You are the God who said earlier that you are going to fight my battles Man. for me. You are the same God who said, I'm going to lead you to a place that has unending resources. I'm going to take you to a place that's flowing with milk and honey. But they say, like, no, we don't want milk and honey. We just want some leftovers back there. But when you get to a place where you feel like you are stagnant, you don't feel like you don't have nowhere to go, pause and pray. Pause and pray. Take a deep breath. Because sometimes we run into those hard situations. What we do, we begin to mumble. We begin to complain. The Bible says do all things. For the Lord without mumbling or complaining about it. Amen. It's in those times that God will give you grace to go through it. Mm -hmm. So instead of letting your immediate reaction mm -hmm. to be to grumble and complain, let a response be, you know what? I'm going to pause and I'm going to pray about this. Because right. prayer right. gives heaven permission to get involved with your earthly affairs. Right. So when you pray, you say in heaven. All right, I all need right. you yeah. to intercede yeah. on my behalf yeah. because this problem yeah. is too big for me. Yeah. This issue yeah. is too mighty for yeah. me. Yeah. So I need you to get involved. Oh, yeah. Amen. So prayer gives heaven permission to get involved because yeah. God will allow you to go through it if you want to go through it. Amen. Number two. Seek God's face, he will always extend his hand. Yes, he will. If you seek his face, he will always extend his hand. So when he so when they when Moses sought the face of God, God says, Like, why are you crying out to me? I've already given you authority. I've already given you the answer. I've already told you to keep moving forward. So, so, so God will extend his hand when you seek his face. So many times we look for his hand first. But when we try to get in the face of God, he will automatically extend his hand. Yes, yes, yes. Seek his presence and everything else comes with it. Yes. Seek his face and everything else comes with it. Yes. Number three. God will make a way in the midst of your enemies. Somebody ought to shout hallelujah for that. Somebody ought to shout thank you Jesus for that. Where do I get that from? You guys know the story. It said that when they got to the Red Sea, they had Pharaoh's, all his chariots and his charioteers. They said the whole army was chasing them. And then they were surrounded by a desert place. You know what desert place is, what they represent. It's a place, place uh, where nothing is productive. Nothing is growing. Right. So it was nothing out there. Like we would call it today, they were stuck between a rock and a hard place. This uh -huh. is place. Uh -huh. And they didn't have nowhere to go. Uh -huh. They didn't have nothing to do. 
But I'm going to come here to tell you on the day when you put your eyes on Jesus, right. when you put your right. trust in Jesus, right. he will make a way out of no way. David says it like this. He says, I, I will give you a table in the presence of your enemy. So God will allow you to eat the choice few foods. He will allow you to have the best things right in the midst of your enemies. And the same way that Pharaoh and, the, and his army, they said they're, they're trapped by the Red Sea. They can't go behind us because we're behind them. And they're in the desert. And it says that they were thinking. They were thinking that the Israelites were trapped. But the Bible declares that they were never trapped. They were never in any danger. God had a plan from the beginning. He says, I'm going to get the glory through Pharaoh and all of his army. So I'm coming here to tell you on this morning, if they chasing you, if you feel like you're in this Red Sea place, remember this. God said it. He will make a way in the midst of your enemies. And watch this. They're going to have to watch you. Watch this. I love this. They, they had to watch the children of Israel go and walk through what they thought was a hazardous place. They had to watch them walk into destiny. They had to watch them walk to the promise. They had to watch them do it. Imagine, so, so watch this. Imagine if you got like all of this chasing you and people don't want you to get somewhere and, and your boss is trying to hold you back. But God begins to promote you in the midst of. God begins to do things in the midst of and they just got to sit there and watch it. They just got to sit there and be like, uh, like, like ain't nothing we can do. Because the Bible declares that once the children of Israel began to walk through the Red Sea, it says that the pillar of cloud that was in front of them, it said it became a pillar of fire. And it got between the children of Israel and the Egyptians. Wow. So it says that the Egyptians could not come nigh them. Amen. They were close, but they couldn't touch them. They seen them, but they couldn't do nothing about it. Only thing they can do is sit there and watch it. Wow. And God is doing that in this season. He will make it to your enemies or your footstool. Number four. God will make a way out of no way. God will make a way out of no way. He's that type of God. Even when you don't see a way, God will make a way. Matter of fact, you never have to guess is there a way. The Bible declares that he is the way, the truth, and the life. So if you're in a place right now where you don't know the way, you feel like, Lord, I don't know what to do, trust in the Lord. Go read. I, I dare you to go read John chapter number 14, verse number 6. He says, I'm the truth, I'm the way, I'm the life. So if you feel lost, follow Jesus and watch what happens. Follow Jesus. Follow Jesus. This Psalms 119, 105 says, Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. If you following the word of God, you're in that word, it's going to guide you each and every day in any situation, wherever you need to go, it's going to guide you. It's a lamp unto your feet and it's going to light up your path. He will make a way out of no way. As a Hebrew word called ex nihilo. Ex nihilo. Ex means out of. Nihilo means nothing. So we know the God, he's a God of ex nihilo. He makes something out of nothing. He's the God who, who can make your crazy situation into a situation of wisdom. He, he's the one who says he takes the the, the, the wise things to the food, confound the food. He takes this this foolish situation, and in the end, it's gonna look wise. He's gonna take your situation that you say, Lord, I, this look foolish, but he says in the end, it's gonna be wise. 
He says, like, I, I know I told you to stay there in that chaotic situation, but they say, why are you still there? God is shaping you. He is molding you. He is doing something through you. that he said, that, like, if they wouldn't believe even if I told you so. So God will tell you some things. Sometimes it's going to go against what you think. It's like most of the time when God tells you something, it goes against all human logic. Yeah. It goes against it. Then he began to say things like, yeah, that's why I said Isaiah 55, you know, it ain't like your ways are not my ways. My thoughts are not your thoughts. As far as the heaven is from the earth, that's how much higher my ways are than your ways. He goes on to say, you know, when I send out my word, he says, it will not return back unto me void. So imagine this. I don't know if you got a revelation out of that, but so when God sends out a word, God says, I'm so powerful. When I send out a word, my word has to report back to me. My word has to come back to me and confirm what I sent it out to do. So whatever God told you, it don't matter what they say. It don't matter what your situation says. It don't matter what the Pharaoh says. God says, my word is going to produce whatever I set it out to do. I got two more. Whatever you find yourself in a stagnant place, God says you got to move forward. You got to get this. Your situation does not change God's plan. Mm -hmm. All right. All right now. I'm going to shock some of you when I say this. You are not that powerful. Mm -hmm. I'm not that powerful mm -hmm. to where our situation can change God's plan. Mm -hmm. We may change our mind. Mm -hmm. We may change our walk and go left when he says go right. Mm -hmm. But the sick, but God's plan. Mm -hmm. Watch this. This is gonna be a revelation for some of you. God's plan did not change. Some of the things that God told you a year ago, two years ago, five years ago, ten years ago, that plan is still in play. Mm -hmm. It did not change. Mm -hmm. You changed your mind. Yeah. All right. All right. You changed yeah. your mind. Yeah. God is not bipolar. <laughs> he is not a schizo. He says he is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. When he speaks, he acts. And when he makes a promise, he will fulfill it. He, he ain't bipolar. No, he ain't. He ain't a schizophrenia. If he said it, then it's so. So, so if God is not a lie. Okay, I ain't gonna finish that. I ain't gonna finish that. Let every man be a lie. And let God right now. Amen. 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 Last thing I gotta tell you is this. This 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 probably gonna be the most profound one I give you on the day. Whenever you come up against a hard situation. Y'all ready for this? Y'all ready for this? Go ahead. Alright, show it to us. Keep moving. No matter what. Keep moving forward no matter what. I, 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 I wish I could give you a magic formula. But there's no magic in the kingdom. The kingdom works off faith. Amen. So once you continue to move forward in faith, things will begin to unfold. Come on, brother. God is not going to show you that full picture. Why? Because if he shows it to you, you're you going you to clock out anyway. You're going to say, God, it's not worth all this. God, I didn't know I had to go through all this. God, I was better over there. God, at least I knew over there. At least at least I knew that it was going to be a mess and chaotic every single day. At least I knew it was going to be messy every single day. At least I knew, Lord God. But once you like begin to walk with God, sometimes... Things will be uncertain, but you just yeah. got to know that you serve a God who is certain. Yeah. Yeah. You serve a God who is certain. certain. Very certain. And he is not going to, he's not going to have to go back and have a plan B. Mm -mm. Because plan A is Word. perfect. Yes. Amen. Amen.